Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay Diaramsa and I am going to be talking about my experience with UNISA, how I felt transitioning from a full-time university to now a part-time university and my overall experience um, at UNISA. So if you are interested, stick on and carry on watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. in business informatics at UNISA and basically why I chose to go to UNISA was first it was the fees like compared to all the other major university the UNISA fees were quite reasonable and you know I could study and still also manage my budget I could still do whatever I wanted and still afford to pay for my fees because I was paying for my own fees and that was the first reason why I chose UNISA. The second reason why I chose UNISA was because of the whole part-time um, part student life. Because I was working full-time um, at the time when I was studying. And, you know, I wanted to study so badly. But when I looked at the other universities, um, they still required you to maybe attend classes for a certain period whether it was maybe attending classes for one week in a semester so one full week out of the semester or maybe they would ask you to attend classes from 4 p.m until maybe 9 p.m or 8 p.m so for me that was a bit too hectic because where was i gonna get like a week um from work for each semester and also if i'm attending like after work it was just too much i'm already tired from working and now i need to go sit in a classroom and concentrate so i thought for me that would be too much and then unisa seemed like the better option because i could manage my own schedule study whenever i wanted to and you know still get my honors degree so i'm going to talk about fees the unisa fees were quite cheap um, quite reasonable. I think how I managed, um, I split up my fees to pay maybe a thousand rand every month, I think, or a thousand two hundred rand every month. This was the first year, but I won't lie, at some point I felt like, you know what, these a thousand rands are too much for me. I could be doing something else with my thousand rand, and I stopped paying which led to me obviously getting financially excluded and then i needed to get my not financially excluded but financially suspended so i wrote my exams and everything but because i still had an outstanding um i still had outstanding fees i had to pay the balance in order for me to see my fees to see my marks and whether i passed or not so at the end of the year i had to come up with the amount that i think it was like six thousand because i stopped like so i had to come up with the six thousand or the four thousand and then pay off my debt and then you know get to see my marks then the second year i was fortunate enough i was just playing on the website in unisa and i found this link where you could apply for a bursary through unisa i applied for that bursary and i got the bursary so therefore my fees for the second year were paid for and they were going to be a lot this time around because the first year i think i only did two modules and then the second year i think i was going to do four modules now so it was obviously going to be a lot more money if i was already struggling through the first year of paying it obviously meant the second year was just going to be a disaster so that's why i applied for the bursary and i got it which was you know by god's grace so now the study so now the study material um, on how you get your study material and everything. So during your application process, you do fill in your residential address and your postal address and you need to post um, your study material. For me, I, I never understood like my whole two years at UNISA, they did post my study material, but I never understood what exactly was the study material. It was always, um, it was always like, what do they call them? 
like books not textbooks but like books to write on like plain it was just like plain pages where you would need to write on and i never understood like what is the use of these books and that was the only study material i got from yumisa they would just send me plain plain books i guess to write on obviously but like is that study material yeah i got that and that was it that is the study material i got from yumisa just those plain books and nothing else and that came on time it came on time or oh, then they would have like an uh, a, a page with what the course is about uh what textbooks are you going to need so each each course came with that so each course would give me that plain writing book and then like an exam pad yes that's the word an exam pad so they would give you like an exam pad and then on top would be what the course is about and the textbooks you would need so if you're doing four courses i would have like eight exam pads and one page explaining what this course is about and what the textbooks i'm going to need who the lecturer is going to be who the tutors are going to be and all of that and then i would usually just go online to get my exam timetable when my, when the assignments are due and all of that so that i would always get online on the uni uh, on my unisa that's where i would get all of that so that did come on time i know some people would complain that they're not getting anything i never had a student card because i never needed one i knew i would never go on to campus to study or anything i just go when i'm writing my exams so i never had a student card for the whole two years um i don't even know how the unisa student card looks like and that is the only study material i get i got that exam had and that introduction page assignments at unisa i mean i was working when i was um studying at unisa and honestly it was a disaster like it was such a disaster this was the first time studying part-time and working full-time and it was such a disaster i mean i was used to being a full-time student where the only thing i was focusing on was my schoolwork so i had time to study i had time to understand what the course is about when you attend the lectures um you know by the time you have to submit an assignment you have an understanding of what the course is about how many chapters you um went through the lecture was there with you face to face explaining you had tutorials so by the time you submit an assignment you have an idea to say okay this is what the course is about but for the first for the first block because like yeah it's divided into blocks you have two semesters and they're divided into four blocks so for the first block of assignments it was such a disaster i had not opened up a single textbook i had not studied a single thing i had not done anything so basically i registered got my study material and forgot about unisa and they would send you emails to say okay for this week these are the slides for this week this is what we are focusing on I would open those emails not read them and then panic came at the end of the block and i needed to submit my assignments so for the first assignment that was literally the first time opening up the textbook for that specific course so if i had four courses and usually the assignments are all due around the same week so for that week i was just in a panic opening up the assignments i mean opening up the textbook for that course so i would sit and say okay course one the assignment is due first on monday course two the assignment is due on wednesday then oh my god on friday i have course three and four due at the same time so monday it would be me sitting there figuring out what this course is about studying as much as i can opening the slides looking at the whatsapp group what have people shared and then submitting my assignment and then doing the same thing on tuesday only then am i opening up my slides focusing on this course studying and then submitting my assignment i would do that like it was just crisis management i did not have a plan on how i was going to study i did not study well i did not focus it was just literally crisis management that on the day or maybe a week before 
um, the assignment is due, only then am I realizing, oh my God, I'm a UNIS student. And, you know, after that, I said, ah, I'm going to focus. I need to have a study plan because this is not working out. I am going to fail. I need to sit down and do a study plan. And best believe I sat down. I did a whole study plan to say, this is how I'm going to manage my UNISA stuff. Um, after work, I need to have like one hour to concentrate on a specific course. It was so beautifully planned out and best believe I did not follow that plan. Come block two, the assignments are due. And here I am again, panicking to say, which subject do I, which course do I start with? When is what due? I'm staying up all night. Oh my God, like submitting last minute. Why is my UNISA crashing? Did my assignment go through? It was just a cycle. And I honestly did that for the whole two years. After, and then I would do the same thing. After the assignments are due and I'm done, then I sit and I plan like, see, you need to do better girl. I sit there, I put the timetable on my wall. It looks beautiful and I forget about it. And it was literally the same cycle and I never improved. That was basically how I managed my UNISA life because it's difficult to come back from work tired you have sometimes you still bring back work um home you need to finish up on some work you are tired on weekends you're like no I deserve the soft life like that's what I did on weekends because I would say okay if I hadn't studied this week then on the weekend I need to study then come the weekend I'm like child I deserve the soft life I have worked, I am an independent girl working, I am struggling, I am taking myself out, or I am sitting on this couch and watching Netflix, then I say, okay, on Sunday, I'll do better, come Sunday, I'm like, no, God said we, shall, we should rest, then I rest, it was basically a disaster, then when it comes to now the exams, preparing for the exams, even though like I didn't really have like a plan, but when you do do the assignments, you do get some information about the course is about, what you need to study, what is important on this course and all of that. So I definitely, doing the assignments does work and I guess that's the whole point of the assignments to get you to actually do some work and actually see your understanding. So the assignment, when it came to the um, exams, I would um, take out all my assignments, study what I've done on the assignments, go on the WhatsApp group because we'd have WhatsApp groups, um, see what other people are sharing, what type of information that other people are sharing. If there are some past papers that people are sharing, I would do those past papers. And it was honestly, the exams were also like a crisis management time where I would panic that, oh my God, exam season has started. I haven't studied. I'm writing my first exam on Monday and I have a week to study. Then I would pull out all my assignments, go on the WhatsApp groups and everybody on the WhatsApp groups was on the same cycle as me. We would all panic, but we'd all share information and you study as best as you can. And sometimes you wing it, you know. What helped me because at that time, I was working in a specific department and I was doing the work um, for like the courses that I chose. I made sure that they were linked to the department I was working in because I wanted to grow in that department at that time. So luckily enough for me, like some of the questions, even though I hadn't studied enough or studied as much as I should, when it came to some of the questions, I would just put in my work experience to say, actually, this is how we do it at work. And this is, these are the steps I follow at work. And then I would just write that in the exams. And it did work. Like, it did pay off. I did pass some of the work, some of the exams, most of my exams actually based on that. Because the last minute studying did not help me. I was always in a panic, so I wouldn't like absorb anything I was studying it was just always a disaster honestly and my work experience I think was what pushed me and also the group so the WhatsApp group that the students create are really helpful 
I think everybody should join them because people share a lot of the information there. You have people who are repeating um, and they re they don't mind. They are not shy to say, you know what, guys, I'm repeating. So this is what we did last year. This was the pace and they share that information. And I don't mind that. That was very helpful. So that's how I got through the exams and, you know, everything at UNISA. The face to face, like I never met anyone. I never met a single person um, from my classes at UNISA. The only interaction I had with people was through the WhatsApp groups. These were the students through the WhatsApp groups. And then the lecturers would be through the information that they post, whether it's the slides or the information that they shared, the emails. But I never met a single person I studied with at UNISA. During exam times, like everybody's just sitting in their corner. If you are, if you get to the exam venue early, everybody's just sitting in their corner. If people, two people, three people know each other, then they're sitting together. But mostly you'll find people sitting in their cars, people sitting in the exam room on the floor, just focusing on this exam. You write the exam and then you go home there's no interaction we don't know each other and it is a bit difficult but the whatsapp group is what saved me because i was able to communicate with people ask questions and because you don't know them you just post a question whether it's stupid or not somebody will respond to you or somebody will say hey i also had the same question so the whatsapp group was what helped me throughout everything even for past question papers, they would share on the WhatsApp group. If somebody had answers, they would share. And I remember one WhatsApp group, people would actually schedule schedule time to say, okay, guys, um, on Monday we are studying. On Tuesday, we are sharing the answers for this exam paper. Then people would share answers, then mark each other, then whoever had the correct answers. Maybe somebody would say, I actually have um, the memo. Then I'll post the memo once we are done. Then people would post the memo. Those were the A students because I never did any of that. I would wait for the memo to get posted. Then I would start on my own time at my own pace. But yeah, it is very difficult. You don't have a lot of face-to-face -face support or like face-to-face -face interaction. But at the end of the day, you know, I did pass and I got my um, UNISA degree. So it wasn't that bad. You just need patience, especially when it comes to your admin. You need to push through. A lot of the times I found myself having to drive to UNISA because they did something incorrectly. Like when I got my fee suspension, they said if you pay, I, th I think if you pay, then after a certain time, your fees, your marks will get released. Or that's what I thought. So I paid and nothing was happening. So I had to drive there and then ask them, why are my fees not, why are my marks not reflecting? Show them the proof of payment and all of that. And with the registration, sometimes you register or you apply, then you don't get a response back. You don't get to see your, your timetable, your classes, nothing is reflecting. Then you need to go to UNISA and ask, what's happening with my profile? Why am I not seeing any of this? Then they will do, um, the work i mean yeah they will process you i think at some point they didn't process me correctly then because i was there face to face they did all of that with the like the bursary also i had to go there to say i got accepted but why is not anything getting paid then they told me no it's fine wait a few months it will reflect i think i waited the whole year nothing reflected and then at the last minute my fees were paid so it takes like a lot of patience and pushing because this is what you want so you need to push yourself also because there's no face-to-face -face interaction nobody is really there to hold your hand you don't really have a friend to say friend let's do this together so it's very difficult i hope this video helped and the information shared um does help if you have any questions pop them in the comment section and i'll try to answer as best as i can bye